Welcome to Electro Online. So here's part two of essentially the same example with some numbers changed. What we have done now is we've told the farmer to start using more fertilizer and then to see how the yield changes. You could still see that when the farmer increases the amount of fertilizer used, there's still an increase in yield, but it looks like the increase is beginning to get smaller. Now, what is the covariance going to look like and what is the, the correlation coefficient going to look like? and maybe we can get some more information out of the covariance matrix as well. So let's take a look and see what we have. Again, to get a head start, we've already calculated some of the tedious work. We need to find the average in X and the average in Y, the average in the fertilizer used, and the average in the yield. Now notice we calculated the variance in X and the variance in Y, but notice the variance in X is still very large because we're using consecutively more and more fertilizer, quite a bit more each time, but notice that the variance in Y is very small compared to the variance in X. Does that have a meaning? Well, we'll see in just a moment. We're also going to cal calculate the covariance, and notice that the covariance is also relatively small relative to the variance in X. So X changes a lot, but the covariance is a smaller number. Is that significant? Well, we'll find out in just a moment. Now, let's also calculate the correlation coefficient. So we start out with the covariance, which is 12.5, and we divide it by the square root of the variance in x, which is the square root in 125, and we also divide it by the square root of the variance in y, which is the square root of 1.5. Of course, the square root of 1.5 is close to 1. That doesn't change the numerator a lot. All right, so we get 12.5 divided by 125, take the square root, and divided by 1.5, take the square root, and wow, we still get 0 0.91. So 0 0.91. Notice that it's still fairly close to 1. So this would imply that there's a fairly strong relationship, correlation between increased use of fertilizer and increased yield. So in this case, the correlation coefficient kind of gives you a false impression. Yes, there is, seems to be a strong correlation, but is it really worth it to use an extra 30% of fertilizer in order to get a little bit more yield? And notice going from 120 to 130 didn't appear to make any change in the yield. Well, let's, let's go ahead and put together the, the uh, covariance matrix to kind of get a feel for that. So if we write up the covariance matrix in the diagonal elements, we're going to get the variances of the two variables. So the variance in X is 125 and the variance in Y is 1.5. The off-diagonal elements are the covariance calculation, which is 12.5, 12.5, and 12.5. So here we get a visualization of what's happening. A large variation in X, meaning a large change in the amount of fertilizer used, results in a very small variance in the yield, 1.5. So lots of change in the, in the change in the uh, fertilizer used means very small amount of change in the yield. And so you can see that the covariance elements are fairly small relative to the variance in X. And so here you can have a visualization that yes, even though there's a fairly strong relationship correlation between increase in fer fertilizer and increase in yield, the amount of increase in yield using, looking at this covariance matrix doesn't appear to be that strong, that large, and so you may not want to put in the extra money in using them, this much more fertilizer for a relatively small increase in yield. At some point, it's kind of counterproductive. And also, of course, at some point, it may also be that if you use way too much fertilizer, it's not good for the crop and you might actually have a reduction in the crop yield too. And so you begin to see that at this point you may tell the farmer, you probably are using too much fertilizer, don't put so much money into it, don't put so much effort in adding this much fertilizer because the increase in yield will be relatively small. And that's how we can tell by using the covariance and the covariance matrix.